So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the Markovitz model, which is part of our module on the modern portfolio theory. So uh, in this particular video, we're going to understand the underpinnings of a basic Markovitz model, uh, sort of reviewing our concepts on risk and uh, expected return from the last video. And we're going to apply it into this context on what Harry Markowitz thought was uh, a good solution to the problems we have discussed in the past module. So the Markowitz model really starts with this um, mean variance dominance, which I'll discuss now. So an asset or a portfolio, say A, is said to mean variance dominate another asset or portfolio B if you can either have one of the two, right? So the first is that if the expected return of asset A is great or portfolio A is greater than or equal to the expected return of asset or portfolio B, and simultaneously that the variance of asset A is strictly less than B, then portfolio A is mean variance dominant to portfolio B. And that's because simply uh, if you have this inequality here, then A is at least equal to B, but A is strictly has a lower variance than B. So you would, of course, choose uh, A. It's, it's a logical decision. The second case would be, uh, this would be number two. Your second case would be, if, for example, you put the strict, the strict inequality on the expected return, if A has a strictly greater expected return than B, and simultaneously it has a less than or equal uh, variance compared to B, then you would also mean variance dominant. Uh, domin uh, you would also consider A to mean variance dominate portfolio B, right? And what you do is we can form what we call an efficient frontier. And the efficient frontier of a particular investment is essentially an opportunity set that is defined as the locus of all non-dominated non portfolios in the standard in the mean standard deviation space, in our mean variance space. So this just means that for a particular given variance or standard deviation, no other investment opportunity offers a higher expected return. So by definition, no rational, right, mean variance expected utility maximizing investor would choose to hold a portfolio that is not in that efficient frontier, right? Because uh, a utility maximizing investor would always choose likely based on uh, the person's maximization procedure, uh, an, a portfolio or an asset that would yield as high expected return for a given particular uh, risk level. Thus, the shape of the efficient frontier is of primary interest to the investor, right? So. Uh, let's discuss a couple of features of the basic Markowitz model. So the only relevant characteristic of a portfolio under this basic sort of assertion is uh, the expected return and the expected risk. And the thing is we proxy the expected risk, as we said, by the variance, which in this case is this proxied by the expected variance or the expected standard deviation. So we only look at the expected return and the expected variance. The second one is that rational investors elect to hold efficient portfolios. Portfolios which maximize expected return for a given level of risk and they minimize risk for a given expected return. So those two conditions must hold. In order for me to ascertain that a portfolio is particularly efficient, the portfolio needs to maximize an expected return for a given level of risk, but also minimize risk for that given level of expected return. So it's a, those are your FOC and your SOCs. Next, it is theoretically possible to identify efficient portfolios by, uh, by appropriate analysis of information for each security on expected return, variance of return, and the covariance of return, i.e. you can sort of identify and rank various portfolios, again, just by looking at their expected return and the expected variance and the covariance of the return. And you can judge which uh, of the alternatives is your efficient portfolio. Next, these inputs can be utilized by any standardized computer program to calculate a set of efficient portfolios, i.e. you can plug them into some normal uh, modern software 
and the output essentially should be the weight or the proportion of an investor of an investor's investable wealth in a fund that should be allocated. Okay. So essentially, the efficient portfolio is calculated by trying to determine what's the optimal weight of each asset inside of a portfolio, right? So uh, that's that. Okay. So let's discuss now portfolio weights. Right. So again, this is what is going to be searched for, at, at least in terms of our Markowitz model. So portfolio weights indicate the fraction of the portfolio's total value held in each asset. Note that this is each asset, not each asset class, although those two might intersect on some vein, in, in some veins. Right. So we define XI as a portfolio weight, which is the value held in a security I divided by the total portfolio value. For example, say I have a stock portfolio wherein my wealth, uh, my stock of wealth inside of the portfolio is around, say, 10,000 pesos or $10,000. If I have, let's say, $1,000 or 1,000 pesos inside of Apple, right? Say I invest that. Well, its portfolio weight, X1, say Apple is um, the first firm that's there, is going to be 1,000 divided by 10,000, meaning the portfolio weight of Apple, of Apple is 0.10, right? And of course, by logic, all the portfolio weights must sum up to one. So the portfolio composition can be described by the set of its portfolio weights. So you can think of a portfolio, uh, not just mainly a collection of different uh, securities, but uh, you can characterize them based on the weight that you give each security and each asset inside of the portfolio. So by definition, portfolio weights, as I said, must sum up to one. And note that this is a redefinition of portfolio weights. We only consider the class of risky assets, the risky portfolio as basis for calculating the investment weights XI. And initially, at least in our lectures, we will assume that the weights are non-negative. Right? We will not allow essentially for any uh, sort of short selling decision, which may cause a portfolio weight to be negative because you're going to borrow something. right? But uh, later, we will relax that assumption when we introduce short selling and uh, borrowing to fund the portfolio. So negative portfolio weights do exist, and they allow us to deal with borrowing and short selling of assets. So that's uh, an aspect to consider. So what are the data points that you need for the portfolio calculations? Well, you need, of course, the expected return of each asset. You need the variance or standard deviation of each uh, return, of the return of each asset. And you also need the covariance or the correlation of returns for all pairs of assets, right? So you need all of those. So um, that ends it for this particular video. In the next video, we're going to start to discuss now um, sort of an example of a portfolio of two risky assets and oh, its relevance generally to the world. And we'll uh, delve much deeper into um, the Markowitz model. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.